What is going on everybody? Brent's Bricks back here with episode two of Ask Brent's Bricks. And uh, this is my second time recording this entire video. So my first attempt, I answered every single question. I spent about two or three days editing the video because it was like an hour and a half of footage and I combined it all into like a half an hour. And when I was finally done, and I went to export the video, there was some problems. And uh, all of a sudden, my videos were corrupt. And uh, long story short, there was uh, nothing I could have really done about it, and I had to delete everything and restart. So that being said, another reason why I had so much footage to edit is because I answered every single question. And while I'm still gonna answer a lot of these questions, I actually did get a lot more than I thought, so I'm gonna have to just answer the ones that stand out to me for the sake of the runtime. And I just really don't wanna have to spend all that time editing a video again for that long, only for it to just become corrupt. Either way, I was really, really upset at first, but I'm past that. I'm ready to go ahead and tackle these questions again. And like I said, I answered everything in the last video. I mean, I was even just addressing comments that weren't even questions. If you have a question you would like me to answer in next week's episode, make sure to leave your questions down in the comments below. But with all that out of the way, guys, let's go ahead and get right back into it and give this another shot. So the first question is actually from AJ over at the House of Masks. He wants to know, who is your all-time favorite skater? So in terms of my all-time favorite skateboarder, I always go back to Brian Herman. He's not the most well-known guy in like the commercial skateboarding world. Like he's not like a Tony Hawk or a Van Margera or one of those well-known guys, Rob Deerdeck. But I have just always loved his style, his trick selection, just the tricks he does in general. Ever since I first saw his part in Baker 3 back when I was like 14, that was pretty much it for me. I was just like, yeah, that's my guy. The next question is coming in from Nick Plays, and he wants to know, how many subs do you think you will get in one year, and what is your favorite restaurant slash fast food place where you live? So to be honest, I would just be happy to have 1K by the end of the year. I know I'm at like 819 or 820, somewhere around there. But to be honest, I would just be grateful for 1K. 1K is kind of like that first YouTube milestone. I feel like that's the point when you know you're kind of getting somewhere. You can finally do things like make community posts and more importantly, live stream. And I'm gonna be super pumped up to be able to do some super awesome live streams. And also my favorite restaurant slash fast food place where I live, so I'm assuming like non-chain, so like only a place I can go to where I live. And I think that's gotta be Casa del Taco. I feel like 99% of people you meet in my hometown are gonna tell you that they like Casa. And Casa del Taco is kind of like Taco Bell, but just like, almost like homemade and just way better. Uh. It's that dragon fruit Red Bull. Yeah, Casa del Taco, hometown spot, super, super, super good. Amazing quesadillas. Our next question is coming in from Ditto. If Lego could make a wave of sets from a horror movie, which movie would you want it to be and why? Personally, Halloween series Myers House would be a dope build. And to be honest, I'm going to have to agree with you there. I don't watch a ton of horror movies. I really do like Michael Myers and Halloween. But I think the Myers house would be an incredible build. Like get some light up pumpkins to put on the porch and everything. That would be awesome. Next question is coming in here from Crazy Lego Fan. When did you start skateboarding? When did you start collecting Lego? What's your favorite Lego theme? And who is your favorite character in Star Wars? So I got my first skateboard when I was like 12, but I didn't really start skateboarding every day till about 13. So I only seriously started collecting Lego a couple years ago. I did have Lego growing up, obviously, like most kids, but that's another long story in and of itself. That might even just have to be in its own video. What's your favorite Lego theme? Harry Potter. Nah, I'm just kidding, Star Wars. 
And then he asks, who is my favorite Star Wars character? But I know somebody else will ask that question later on on these questions, so we'll answer that later. And then he mentions the Diagon Alley challenge is going to be insane, which that will happen. That challenge being me and Jake building the entire Diagon Alley set in the time it takes to watch the first two Harry Potter films, which is roughly four, four and a half hours. Our next question from the controller, who are your top 10 favorite rappers? Now this was a tough one at first, you know, I really had to think about it, but now that I've done this video already and I'm doing it again, I already know my answers. So I split the 10 up into five rappers that I grew up listening to and five rappers that are kind of newer. So we'll go with the newer rappers first. So I really like the baby. Huh? I really like Young Gravy, Baby No Money, Trippy Red, and Jack Harlow. Uh. So we're gonna go Lil Wayne, Eminem, of course Mac Miller, Drake, and Kid Cudi. And that top 10 is in no particular order too, by the way. Next question is coming in from, I'm so sorry, but I am about to butcher your name worse than it's ever been butchered before. Josipa Kapitanovich, what is your favorite character from the movie series, The Hobbit? Hmm. So I think I'm gonna have to say Gollum, not necessarily because I like his actual character in the movie so much, but to be honest, the performance from Andy Serkis is just absolutely incredible. Ugh. Moving on to our next question from Romero to Black Horse. Favorite moment with AJ on or off camera? Also favorite video you filmed with AJ? So my favorite off camera moment goes way back to when me and AJ were both like, 14. The year was 2008. AJ was over at my house and we were playing EA Skate on the Xbox 360. Back then, AJ was really into playing this my name game with people. For example, if he was doing it now, he'd be like, oh, my name's Brent and I like to build Lego. And for whatever reason, my Xbox popped up this warning message. And then I don't know why, but AJ just goes, my name's Xbox and I'm warning you. And we just thought that that was the most like hilarious thing we've ever heard and it just turned into this whole thing and i'm pretty sure my name and aj's phone is still brent bowers is warning you so dumb it's just one of those stupid inside jokes that you make with your friends when you're 14 and you just never forget about them but uh him and i are probably the only people that are laughing about that right now so uh yeah <laughs> And in terms of favorite videos I've made with AJ, probably the one where I beat him in a game of skate. Land with the trucks down on the next I was one. I going to say I was down T to nothing. But in all seriousness, I met AJ through skateboarding back in the day. So anytime we throw skateboarding into any video we do, I always have a good time. But if I had to pick one video, it's probably the one where I learned how to ride a motorcycle because I was legitimately terrified and I was actually proud of the way that I uh, did it and I didn't die. So if you are interested in watching videos like that, I will be leaving the link to The Good Life down in the description below. Our next question is coming in from my buddy Jesse Mitten. He asks, what build have you done that turned out to be the hardest and most annoying? So I would say the most difficult build I've done is definitely the UCS Millennium Falcon. 7,541 pieces. I mean, it is definitely a task to build. There's a ton of super small pieces to make up a lot of the detailing and greebling along the whole thing. I mean, it looks so ridiculous. I literally felt like I was building the actual Millennium Falcon. The experience of building one of those things, it's like binge watching a good TV show, you know? It's like something you're looking forward to every day. My buddy Jake that's going to be doing the Diagon Alley challenge with me actually helped me out with the UCS Falcon. And while it is a difficult build, I mean, it was just so enjoyable. I wouldn't really say it was annoying by any means. You know, sometimes when I'm having a bad day, I just come up here and take a good gander at my UCS Millennium Falcon. And I just say to myself, you know what? That's real cool, man. But in terms of an annoying Lego building experience, deconstructing Lego and putting it back together, say if you're just cleaning it or if you're taking it apart to store it somewhere and then you want to build it again, that's kind of when things get annoying. Not only can taking apart sets be kind of tedious, but honestly, putting sets back together without Lego's numbered bag system can also be annoying. You have a lot more sorting to do when all of your Lego is just in one pile. That's something Lego does really, really well with their sets is just number out those bags. That way you just don't have a ton of parts to just sort through the whole time. 
The next question is from James Rogers and he asks, what is my favorite mask related channel? Well, definitely not the House of Masks. That guy. Psh. Okay. We've got another question from Jesse Mitten here. He says, what movie character or what movie in general would you like to see Lego release a set for? In my opinion, we need an official Iron Giant set. And to be honest, I could not agree with you more. I think the Iron Giant would be an incredible set. Just a beast of a brick built Iron Giant. I'll put some pictures up on the screen of some custom mocks people have made, but I mean, if Lego did an official one with like some minifigures and everything, that would be incredible. And if I had to think of one for myself, in my first go around and trying to make this whole video, I mentioned a Big Hero 6 being a cool set, but to be honest, a brick built Iron Giant, I need that. Next question coming in from Japanese Bostonian 12. What are your top five bands slash artists of all time? Shoo, that's a really, really tough one. Um, well, when you say all time, like I've got to say the Beatles. I'm going to have to say the used Jack White and pretty much anything he's involved with. I saw his live show at Forecastle Fest back in like 2014, and that was incredible. And I just started listening to him, but I'm going to throw Billy Strings in there. I mean, this is an all time top five. Nah, I'm leaving him in there. So we got the Beatles, the used Jack White, Billy Strings and uh, John Mayer. Next question is coming in from my buddy, Will Matthews. He says, how will the Reds do this year? Will they make the playoffs? Also, what's your favorite thing to watch on YouTube as a YouTuber? So I think the Reds definitely have a good shot at making the playoffs. You know, their bats are looking good. Their pitching is what's going to kind of be up in the air. They should be getting Sonny Gray back soon, so that's good. We lost the first game of the season, then we won six in a row, but then we lost a couple after that, so yeah. I think we got a good shot at making the playoffs as long as we can figure stuff out with our pitchers. You know, our bats are going to be there. And in terms of my favorite thing to watch on YouTube, I mean, I watch a ton of stuff on YouTube. I have no cable, so I watch all of my sports highlights on YouTube. I watch a ton of skateboarding stuff, obviously Lego stuff. And I watch some of the other bigger YouTubers like Danny Duncan and Ross Creations. I usually find most of my podcasts that I listen to on YouTube. Next question is coming in from Jennifer Brewster. She says, why are you such a fox? Next question coming in from Maximilian. Do you like scary movies? If yes, which ones? Like I mentioned earlier, I've not really seen a ton of scary movies, but I really, really do love the Halloween movies, especially the first two. The very first couple Star Wars movies are so impressive and special to me because they were so old and ahead of their time. And I feel that way about John Carpenter's Halloween. I mean, it's a late 70s horror movie, but it still stands the test of time and still holds up today. Next questions are coming in from Mark Zapanta. And he says, what is your first Star Wars and Harry Potter set? Did you already decide what tattoo you're going to get when you reach 1K subs? And last, were you a LeBron hater when he first left the Cavs to join the Heat? So I can't exactly remember which exact Star Wars set I had first. But I know it had to be one of these three. It could have been just one of these. It could have been all three of them at one time for my birthday or something. These two are still sealed, by the way. And in terms of Harry Potter sets, I really can't remember exactly which one I had first either. I started getting Lego sets at a super, super young age. And I had almost the entire first wave of these Harry Potter sets. And now I don't have any of those anymore. Well, I have this one. And the thing with LeBron is, when he first left the Cavs to go to the Heat, I didn't really blame him that much. People always talk about how MJ and Kobe and Tim Duncan were always so loyal and stayed on the same team their whole career. Well, yeah, I'd stay on the same team too if I was playing with Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman. Or if I was Kobe and I was playing with Shaq. And Tim Duncan always had good players with him, and he was playing for Greg Popovich. So for LeBron's situation, Cleveland never really got him a ton of help. And I always had a feeling LeBron was going to come back. And after he won a couple championships down in Miami, he did come back. Back to up for the last. Oh, blocked by James! LeBron James with the rejection! And even though he left again and he plays for the Lakers now, LeBron helped deliver one of the most legendary NBA championships of all time. Cleveland! This is for you! 
Matter of fact, one of the most legendary sporting championships in general. To do something that no other NBA team had ever done in the history of the game was just absolutely insane. And I mean, LeBron's from Ohio. I'm from Ohio. I'm going to be a fan of LeBron no matter where he's playing. Next question is coming in from Chris Grimm. What is your favorite Lego set and how long have you been collecting? Favorite Lego set has to be the UCS Millennium Falcon. And like I mentioned earlier, I've only been seriously collecting for a couple years now. Next question is coming in from Gangrel. Gangrel? I'm really sorry if I said your name wrong. What would you consider your Lego Holy Grail? Like I mentioned earlier, when I was younger, I had this entire first wave of the OG Harry Potter sets, so I would love to get my hands on all of those sets again. That entire first wave of Harry Potter sets is pretty much my holy grail. Ethan Huskinson says, have you ever hit a ball over the net at Top Golf?" Well, I have not, but I also haven't really given it a try. Maybe next time I go, I'll have to tee one up high and uh, see if I can knock one over the net. Next question coming from Mr. Toon. Who is your favorite Star Wars character? Man, this is such a hard decision. I mean, so many people like Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, Luke Skywalker. But you know what? My favorite Star Wars character is Rose Tico. <laughs> now, to be honest, like, I really love Yoda. And specifically, Empire Strikes Back, old, grumpy, yelling at Luke, banging him on the head with his walking stick, Yoda. Next question from Amal Sheba. Do you have a gaming system? Do you play Battlefront 2? If not, are you planning to? I have an Xbox One. I also have a Nintendo Switch. And I do have Battlefront 1 and 2. But to be honest, I have so many games I haven't played through all the way. And between working full time and trying to post YouTube videos consistently, I really don't have a ton of time to play video games. Next question coming from the Lego boy. I have 370 US dollars in my budget. I want to buy a Lego Star Wars set from any year. Suggestions, please. Hmm, from any year. So I guess we'll start with a current day set. I would honestly go for the Moss Eisley Cantina. It's $350, but it's always sold out on lego.com. So I don't know if maybe you can check out some Lego stores that are close to you that might have it in stock. But if you're looking to get some retired sets, I was looking on eBay earlier when I first shot this whole video, and I would check out some Slave Ones. The UCS Slave One is incredible. That's one of those old UCS sets I really, really wish I had. I've seen that thing as expensive as $1,000, but I've also seen it as cheap as about $350. So definitely do some digging. That's one of those UCS sets that I really would like to try to get my hands on before it gets up to like $2,000. Next question here from Robert. Will you ever forgive the Star Wars franchise for releasing more movies than they should have? Well, I don't really know what you exactly mean by more movies than they should have. If you look at Marvel, they've released like 22 movies in the last like 12 years. Star Wars has been a franchise for a little over 40 years and they've made 11 movies. To be honest, I'm ready for 11 more Star Wars movies. If you're kind of referring to like the Disney trilogy being unnecessary or oh, they shouldn't have done it. Listen, I like The Force Awakens. I understand why people are frustrated with Episode 8 and 9. I share some of the same frustration. But I also think Rogue One is a really good movie. And I think Solo would have done a lot better if it not came out right alongside Endgame. Or was it Infinity War? Solo came out like right along with Endgame or Infinity War. So you literally did not even see toys for Solo out that often because it was just Marvel stuff everywhere. And of course, The Mandalorian is amazing, and we've gotten new stuff from The Clone Wars. So the only bad new stuff from Star Wars is like Episode 8 and 9. So no, I definitely think they didn't make too many movies. The Star Wars universe is massive. They could make 10 movies over the next 10 years, and each movie could be about something completely different. Anyways, you get me talking about Star Wars and I won't shut up for like three hours. Our next question coming from Kurt. If you could get Lego to make any set from any movie, what set and what movie? It does not have to be a kid's movie. It could also be from a movie Lego has already done sets on and you want to redesign it with newer pieces or better updated characters. So when you put it that way, I would honestly really love to see more stuff from Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I feel like they didn't make a ton of sets from those movies, and I definitely wasn't collecting Lego around that time. 
and the resale value for those sets has just gone way, way, way up. So I would really love to see some more Lord of the Rings and Hobbit sets. Next question from Brody Mordecai. What is your dream for this channel? Honestly, my dream for this channel is just to be able to do this more often. I would love to eventually get monetized. That way I can take more time off from work and put more time into YouTube so I can make more videos for you guys. So that's honestly the main goal right now is just to try to make as much quality content as I can possibly do right now while I still work a full-time job. Next question coming from Lego Animation. Why did you hide Jar Jar Binks in the House of Masks? Well, to be honest, I can't really hide Jar Jar in any of my other friends' houses because nobody else has a collection like that. <laughs> AJ's collection is so giant. I mean, I pretty much put Jar Jar in like plain sight and it still took him a little while to notice that he was there. And AJ's not really into Star Wars and it's Jar Jar, so I don't know. I just thought it'd be funny. Access Denied says, what is your favorite episode of Star Wars? Not only is The Empire Strikes Back my favorite Star Wars film, but it is my favorite film of all time. Brody Mordecai with another question. He says, outside of Lego, what else do you like to do? Well, I really like sports, so I like to golf, play basketball. I'm really getting into playing baseball-related stuff again, like men's softball and wiffle ball. I really love to skateboard. I really like to snowboard. I like to get some video games in. I really like eating food. I'm definitely a foodie. Like, I really, really enjoy going out to dinner and having a nice meal. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I do. Next one coming in from BP. Would you ever consider changing your name to Carl? Well, if I change my name to Carl, then I would be Carl's Bricks, and that just doesn't really work the same. Next question coming from my buddy Tyler Mannering, and he says, what is the weirdest thing you've ever smelled? What's just as weird is as soon as I read that when he commented that question, I instantly knew my answer. And I would probably skip ahead like 45 seconds if you don't want to hear something kind of gross. So back when I was like 13, 14, you know, me and my friends were just doing weird stuff, you know, typical 13 and 14 year old things. And one of my friends thought it would be a good idea to take a blueberry candle, fart in it, put the cap on it, and then just let it marinate for a long time. And then when he decided to open that candle, you better believe he made all of us smell it. And let me tell you, the combination of just gas and a fruity candle was just unsettling. I still to this day don't think I can enjoy a blueberry candle anymore. James Rogers says, is it bad that I want to see a whole build unedited? And no, it is not bad because when I reach 1K, I will be doing live builds. I'll be doing crazy stuff like building an entire UCS Star Destroyer in one sitting. I'm just kidding. I don't have a UCS Star Destroyer. But if I did have a UCS Star Destroyer or if I did have some other big D to C sets that I could sit down and challenge myself to build in one sitting and have you guys in the live stream, that would be super, super fun. So be on the lookout for something like that in the future. BP again says, do you still play Pokemon Go? I play Pokemon Go every day. And then BP again says, do you believe in aliens or are we aliens? And then he says, can you build a potato gun and shoot Lego men out of it? Why am I getting a feeling that this BP person is somebody that I know? I'm like 99% sure I might know who this is. But I guess if you want me to uh, build a potato gun and put some minifigures in it, uh, we can make it happen. Anyways, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this video. If you have a question for me to answer in next week's episode, please leave that down in the comments below. I'm going to end it here and hopefully be able to edit all this and upload it again without any problems. Well, guys, wish me luck editing this video. Thank you all so much for liking, commenting, subscribing. You all are amazing. As always, this has been Brent Bricks. And remember, never stop building.